and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at configuring an SSTP VPN server on a Microtik. Um, basic steps, we'll generate, we'll sign and we'll export a certificate. We'll configure the SSTP profile and user details on the Microtik and then we'll export that certificate onto a Windows device. We'll install that certificate, provision a VPN client and test. But first, let's just have a quick look at what is SSTP, um, why we should use it, and why we may not use it. Um, some pros, it's highly secure, it uses SSL, um, which yeah, if you're familiar with, uses 443, so it makes it firewall friendly. Um, meaning if you are on a network that is restricted to what's allowed out, um, very commonly, 443 will be allowed because that's what you'll be looking at most web pages on. Um, providing they're not doing any deep packet inspection or anything like that. Normally, most it will get through most uh, um, gateways. Um, and it has native Windows support, so it's built into Windows uh, without needing additional third party uh, clients. Um, but some cons are there's um, not every device is compatible with it. So obviously sometimes it's only limited to Windows. Um, you're dependent on installing a certificate. Um, so it requires proper you know, setup. It's not just giving someone a username and password or using, using a username and password. And um, yeah, using the SSL encryption can add some extra overhead to the, the traffic. But um, yeah, we'll get into configuring it. Uh, I'll explain a bit more as we go along. Um, there's a lot of uh, what you would have probably used L2TP for, where that's now a lot of clients are not allowing that anymore, particularly Android devices. Windows makes it a lot harder to use. Um, they, they won't allow it if it's if the server is natting, which in our case we will be, because this demo we're going to be using a uh, AWS um, CHR. And uh, the interface on the Microtik is a local one, and then we're natting through the AWS public IP address that we get given. So um, that can cause some problems. So then SSL, SSTP was a good uh, option for the things I've pointed out. It works well with Windows. You can deploy the certificate if you have a um, certificate authority within your. Um, Active Directory with your Windows domain. Um, however, you know as things evolve and uh, demand for security gets higher, nowadays you're more looking like a IKV, uh, IKEV2, IPsec um, configuration. Uh, which, if you click the link uh, in the description or this link just here on the screen, then you see a video on how to configure that and test using an Android device. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at SSTP. Okay, let's jump on our Microtik, which as I mentioned is a CHR, which is hosted in AWS. Um, very minimal config on here. So let's just jump into our certificates first and foremost. Let's add our CA, our certificate authority one. Um, if you're not familiar with certificates and how they work, um, I would recommend having a look into that. Um, there's a few articles on my website. Uh, if you wanted to check those out, if there's anything you want more detail in, please reach out. Uh, always happy to help. Um, but I'll keep it brief for this example. I'll just go through the steps we need to do to get this up and running. Um, so yeah, we'll just give it the same common name, add an extra zero onto the days valid just so we've got a long expiry time and then um, for usage it's control sign key set sign and then okay okay now we're going to add the uh, server one so we're just going to call this one server cert now this time the common name this needs to reflect the uh, public IP address that we're using or should this not be a dynamic, uh, sorry, should this not be a static IP address and you're 
this is your home router and you're getting your IP address dynamically. Um, meaning that when you reboot your router, you get a new IP address. You'd have to reissue this every time. And obviously that's not um, practical. Um, so the other option is to use a domain name. And uh, if this is dynamic, you can use dynamic DNS. Um, and luckily Microtech has its own one built in. So if we go to IP cloud, you just enable this, the DDNS. Um, it picks up its public IP address it's got, and then it gives you this random uh, DNS name, which won't change. Um, and every time it does a lookup, notices this changes, it updates its um, its DNS records. Um, and then you could then have, if you owned your own domain, you could create a C name, Chronicle name, which reflects this, which points this, uh, you know, a more uh, rememberable um, alias such as VPN dot your domain um, to point to this, to resolve to this. Um, but yeah, we're getting a little bit off track there, but just to sort of say, be mindful of that when you're doing this. But for this example, I will just be using the um, IP address because um, that is uh, not going to change for us. Okay, so that's in there. Um, now again, the we use TLS server, key inside and digital signage. There we go. So that's that done. So now we are going to sign the CA1 against the, again, against the same, in our case, IP address. It could be the domain. Start. Done. Now we're going to sign the server one. Get rid of that. And then, but this time we're going to sign it against the CA, which is the certificate authority. Now that's going to, this server certificate is going to live on the Microtech. Click it twice. And then what we're going to do is export the CA. And that's going to be our trusted one, which we're going to stick on our uh, our um, Windows machine, which we're going to use to test with. So let's export that. Let's just give it a pass key or something simple. Again, not highly secure there, but it's just for demo purposes. And then if we jump in files, there we go, we have our our, our um, assert and our key. So we just select those, download, let's put those on the desktop. Okay, and if we quickly take a look, there they are. Cool, that's that done. Now, on to the uh, on to the configuration of the SSTP server. So we go IP, no we don't, we go PPP, we go, and then under interface, the first tab along here, we've got SSTP server. So we're just gonna enable that. As you can see, 443 is the port, which we're not gonna change because that's one of the benefits. Um, a certificate, we're gonna select our server cert. And then we're going to enable this PFS. Okay, now we're going to create our profile. I'm going to call this one SSTP profile. Uh, local address is going to be our IP address of our marketing, our local one. For this, I've just, you could just be your LAN. Uh, bridge or your LAN interface, but I'm just giving it, I've created a dedicated VPN bridge on this marketer here, because it's the only LAN interface effectively we've got. This is the, the network that uses to route out to the internet. Um, so yeah, I've just added this one here, and then I've created IP pool. I've created this, just basically this scope here, 10 to 20 within that range. So then here, for, in here we've got VPN pool. Okay, and then uh, all the other things we need to do is go to protocols, use encryption, yes. Okay, that. Now we're just gonna create our user, which is gonna be me. I'm gonna give it a highly secure password, which obviously you would use something better than that. But again, we are just testing. Um, profile is gonna be the one we just created, the SST, SSTP profile. And then, uh, yep, that is it. Done. So let's test it.
I'm going to jump on this Windows machine here. Let's just go to uh, let's get into that settings. Let's jump on our VPN. Add a VPN. So we of course call this our SSTP dash VPN server name. Sorry, the server we're using is a public IP address. But more practically would be a domain name because that's easier to remember. Um, VPN type SSDP, uh, username password, Andrew, and there we go. There we have our set up. Okay, before we that though, we need to install that certificate on our desktop. So we select local machine. We're going to stick it in the correct trusted root certification authorities directory. Yep, finish installed. And let's just double check it's there. Okay. Oh, yeah, CA cert. Done. Okay, and now also what we need to do ncpa.cpl is a quick way of getting to. You know, adapter settings so you can see it's added it there we just want to change under the security tab allow these protocols make sure chap v2 is checked okay done okay now connect connected there we go if you jump back on our market and we go to active connections there we go you can see we connected there um All good there. Let's bring up the command prompt. Do IP config. There we go. That's the. Uh, there we go. The VPN IP address. We've got dot twenty. Um, this is just a secondary adapter I've got for me to add RDP into this machine to test with. So whatever I do to the internet, I'm not going to kick myself off it. But this is the network it's using to route itself because that's the one that has the gateway. Okay, just. Do my IP. It should show me that I'm now connected by this IP address. And again, we got command prompt. We'll just do a tray shot for fun. Okay, it goes directly to my AWS CHR. Just gonna drop the, the next packet. Put them on. The rest of the internet, and there we go. That is it. Hopefully, that's been uh, clear enough. Again, hit the link below in the description to uh, find the full step by step tutorial where I've got both screenshots from uh, Winbox and also the um, CLI commands. If you prefer that way, just to copy and paste those into terminal. Um, but yeah, if you've got any more questions around this, please. Free feel to free feel, excuse me. Feel free to comment. Um, check out my website. Uh, comment on there on any articles you've got questions with, or if you've got any requests for other videos or um, help with anything else, um, please reach out. But if not, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.